Hey, so I'm in uh, kind of rural uh, Indonesia, a place called Jepara. And um, welcome back to my um, hotel, kind of in the middle of nowhere. I'm looking at sheep right now and pastures. I'm not sure. See that? Yep, yep, there you go. Right behind me. And um, it's a very short walk back, so let me try to be as, as brief as I possibly can. Um, Ultimately, we are in an interesting situation now where a lot of the so-called Western values have been forsaken in favor of safety and, more importantly, in favor of an, of a, of an idealized version of centralized government, particularly in law enforcement. What's really troubling about what's happened in Western societies is that they don't mind anymore centralizing things like public transportation, um, healthcare, and uh, rather than try to provide something that ultimately could benefit people, you know, you've got this conflict between European societies that have centralized things like transport and healthcare, but in only in some cases they've centralized it in only in the major cities. Because they've done that in Europe, and in some cases in America, that has led to a backlash from these kinds of remote places. Uh, to give you an example of the differences in services, there isn't really a government here, uh, not one that has a steady presence. What that means is, you know, I just thought I had a mask. Uh, I had a mask because, you know, number one, despite being on the beach, you can see the water is not very clear. Hey! Um, we've got dogs, extra protection. Um, you've got people burning their trash. Oh! Got a dog. You know, the thing is. Woo! Woo! You don't want to turn your back to an animal. You don't want to turn your back to an animal. Uh, something you just learned over here. Uh, any animal, any mammal. Uh, so, um, ultimately, you've got to. You just got to look big, by the way. You've got these little dogs. Um, that one's small enough to go through the gates. You just got to back up like this, put your arms out. Um, and typically, if they're bigger than you are, as you can go off, they're bigger than you are going to go. So, my point was, you know, people here burn trash. It's not like they have waste management services. It's a public company, by the way. Um, they burn trash, and that creates a lot of toxicity. You know, it makes the, the environment here much less clean than it should be. Because right now, I, I am in the, in the middle of nowhere. The water should be clear, just like it is in Costa Rica. Uh, and, and, and a lot of other places it's not. Um, so the question really is, you know, what, now you've got a conflict in these Western societies, the dogs backed off. Um, so you've got a conflict in these Western societies where you've decentralized a lot of things, say in the US post 11 what you saw was a centralization through the Department of Homeland Security of law enforcement that used to be local. And that polluted, in a sense, the typical line and the checks and balances between the federal government and the state and local governments. Um, why is that a problem? We talked about Western civilization's values. One of those values used to be uh, checks and balances, especially on law enforcement. And the whole idea behind all this, right, is that European governments have managed to stay fairly stable. Because when you go outside, you'll see the underground, uh, you'll see the two. You'll see public transportation everywhere. Uh, if you're a newcomer like me, you'll be very impressed by how good the employees are within London navigating this very complex public transportation system. You don't get that in America. In America, you've got the opposite, where you're just not impressed if you're talking to an employee who is a face-to-face, -face, in a face-to-face -face position. Um, uh, whether it's at the Department of Motor Vehicles, which gives you the licenses, um, or really anywhere. Except for the post office. The post office is actually pretty good. Um, and so ultimately, you've got this sort of divide between Europeans that are trying to tell you that socialism, which the, by, by which they mean centralized government services for healthcare and transportation, as well as law enforcement, uh, all that package uh, together, you've got that conflict between that European society and then. You've got the American model, post 9 11, which is simply saying that we're going to keep this decentralized system when it comes to healthcare and a lot of other essential services like education. But, um, 
you know, we're going to go ahead and centralize law enforcement and remove the checks and balances that we used that used to be there. So with Europe, by the way, the, the whole point of the EU, one of the advantages when it comes to education is that if you're a citizen of the EU, you can go to a, another country's uh, college typically for free. And when I say free, I know that that's a misnomer. Uh, someone's taxes are always paying for it. Uh, but that's why they, these people have, collect, have collect, collectively decided uh, that they're going to get together and subsidize each other so that their consumers can have more choices. In Europe, those choices are very obvious to see because of the differences in language. Um, and again, because whenever you go to a particular city or a particular place, it's quite obvious, um, not just in telecom, that this centralization is directly beneficial to the consumer. By telecom, I mean I can get a SIM card in, in London that applies to 15 or 20 different countries uh, seamlessly. And I can get a package for a week or a month. Usually there's nothing in between. Um, actually, sometimes it's only for a few days, uh, but the monthly package is not difficult to get and it's also inexpensive. So the question is, you know, when you tra travel, you start to see differences not in terms of West versus East, uh, which is kind of a false dichotomy. You start to see the differences in terms of what, what country, in, in which countries have decided uh, uh, what services to provide to their citizens that are heavily subsidized by taxpayer money, oftentimes by taxpayer money within central within um, a group membership such as the EU, versus governments that have decided to limit the scope of their quote unquote interference in private lives, and what you see that very quickly because, like I said, when you walk outside of a really nice hotel like this one, um, this next to a beach called Coconut Beach, you see people burning their trash, and you start to realize that there's a vast difference in terms of what is considered acceptable public services uh, or the scope of public services, rather than a, another model uh, that decides what, this, what that scope is and whether that scope is limited or whether that scope is broad and how you pay for it. If we can try to get that conversation into something that's more specific, like, I just, like the one I just described, maybe we can get somewhere that doesn't lead us directly uh, to a totalitarian state everywhere and, and it, it could also happen in Europe despite their diversity because you know it just looks nicer when you have a totality when you have a centralized government um, providing you not just security services uh, but also health care and public transportation and that doesn't mean that just because you provide that friendly direct consumer face uh, that you can't also veer back into totalitarianism uh, it just looks more obvious in the US because when the government is only centralizing some services especially surveillance, but not others, it's much harder for that government to convince you um, that what they are doing is not leading you towards a totalitarian outcome. But again, the point of privatization is to provide checks and balances, and that's typically in more choices. And in the US, that's just not happening, especially online. How do we fix all that? That's the conversation we ought to be having, as opposed to these inane you know, conversations about socialism versus capitalism. Because that, that paradigm is gone. It really is, how do you fund something? How do you determine the interest rates? How do you resolve the split between excessive funding towards major population centers within democracies, where that, that, because that's where all the votes are, and versus also pacifying and including uh, more rural populations? That's an issue that's going on all over the world that requires better city planning uh, and just better sort of more humility uh, in general so that we don't end up in a position where Suddenly, we've centralized so many things that there isn't really a way out.